acting on alcohol as well. My name's Joe. Uh, hey, Joe, nice to meet you. Speak of state, let me see another day. I'm, uh, I've never done this before. Uh, I saw it in the paper and talked about on the road stories and uh, mentioned Jack Kerouac. And, uh, I, some of you may be aware that uh, On the Road was published 50 years ago last year. And, uh, David Amram was at the public library and uh, drew a parallel between Homer and Mark Twain and Jack Kerouac and Woody Guthrie, you know, how these guys wrote uh, on the road stories, you know, that mostly involved men. And <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. But uh, I, these guys always struck a note in me, uh, these guys who wrote these stories. I grew up in the 60s and 70s, and, uh, and I hit the road a lot of times. And these were all men who left their homes and their families and went looking for adventure, and I, I did that many times. Uh, in 1972, I was living in the suburbs and hating it, and uh, I was married and I was hating it. And I, uh, <laughs> I was the guy that uh, I went out to, to a used bookstore in April and I didn't make it back until November. I, uh, I was hitchhiking to the bookstore and I went back to the neighborhood and met a friend, uh, a friend named Jimmy that everybody called Fats, so I called him Puppet. And, and we decided we were going to go to California. We had $10 between us and uh, by the time we hit the turnpike, we had 65 cents, so we had spent the rest of the money on beer. And, Puppet, for some reason, was embarrassed about being broke. And uh, he made up this story about how we stopped in Pittsburgh and these guys robbed us. We had $65 instead of 65 cents and these guys robbed us. He told people this story all the way across the country. And uh, we got to Berkeley. I don't know if you know what Berkeley was like in 1972. But, uh, a friend of ours was already there, a street musician named Bo who played the spoons and the fiddle, and he had these big feet, and he wore white loafers, so he, he was the only spoon-playing fiddler with size 14 feet white loafers, and uh, so he was unmistakable. So this uh, young lady who was a, a heroin addict uh, stole some money from some guys and told them, I gave your money to Bo, the fiddle player, and uh, they saw my friend Puppet with Bo, so they uh, kidnapped Puppet off the street, these two guys from Oakland, and uh, with a machete and an axe, and uh, took him back to their apartment and tied him to a chair and said that uh, they were going to kill him unless he returned their $100. Now, the day before this, we had met a guy who was a Vietnam vet and had just been released from an institution, and he had a stack of uh, VA pension uh, payments, and uh, so we befriended him, and uh, <laughs> at the time, Asset was uh, $35 for 100 hits in Berkeley. So he gave us $70, so we could buy 200 hits, and we were going to get wealthy and move to California. But uh, we gave Puppet the money, and he went to the bar and spent $5, and got kidnapped. And uh, <laughs> So these guys had him tied to a chair, and he said, okay, I've got $65 in my shoe, and, and I'll let you have it. And, uh, Incredibly enough, that was the amount of money that he told people that had been stolen from us in Pittsburgh, $65. And, uh, he almost lost his life for that $65 in Oakland. So we immediately got a bad feeling about Berkeley. <laughs> so Puppet went home, went to Philadelphia, and Bo and I went to Huntington Beach, which is the surfer capital of California. And we lived in a Christian house called the Philadelphia House and hung out with the surfers on the beach and drank wine with them. And, uh, uh, met a Quebecois uh, and uh, a surfer guy with a surfer buggy and we went to Mexico together and uh, we were on the street in Mexico when we met the cab driver that you always hear about. The cab driver, ah, I, I know where the girls are, I can take you to the donkey show. My friend Bo, <laughs> my friend Bo is a joker, he says, well we have $10,000 and we want to buy pot. So, and we didn't have $10, but the guy said, you're so lucky because I'm the biggest pot dealer in Juarez, right? <laughs> so we made arrangements to meet later and Bo says, oh, by the way, if you're the biggest pot dealer in Juarez, why are you driving a cab? He said, it's just a cover. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we took the two dollars order we had, we bought a bottle of mezcal, drove off into the desert, drank it, got the truck stuck in the sand and slept beside the truck that night. Thanks. Okay.